This is, uh, remember, this is the treasure trove of scriptural transmission, and this is a commentary on the treasury of the basic space of phenomenon by Long Chimpa, known in some circles as Short Chimpa. <laughs> by the way, that, <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't know how you made the ultimate dad joke of of the decade <laughs> wow <laughs> but i posted on reddit and it got got a bunch of upvotes <laughs> well i'm not the only corny guy out there <laughs> wow yes she you are impressive that one is one for the ages so, okay, I'm going to be reading from this text a little bit for you yogis out there. This is uh, page 314. And Longchempa is quoting the Six Expanses uh, scripture. Awareness is self-knowing by its own force. Look, right there, first line. That's why I love Longchempa, and that's why. Why he earned his nickname Short Chimp. <laughs> because look, awareness is self-knowing by its own force. You see, people will doubt. It will sound crazy that you can self-liberate any confusion or issues that you have. That they can actually resolve themselves just by abiding in awareness. This seems completely impossible to people. But those of you who are beginning to familiarize with the awareness nature understand that this is only logical, right? <laughs> so, wow. I mean, this isn't long tempo, but he's quoting the six expanses. It's so pithy. Awareness is self-knowing by its own force. No matter where in the 3,000-fold universe you may seek it, there's no place you will find it. Its range is that of the entire universe. In the nature of how sensory appearances manifest lies the vision that no one can see, the blissful, pure realm of self-knowing awareness. Being familiar with this, yogins are fortunate ones who directly perceive the enlightened embodiment of me, Samantabhadra. Okay, hush now. It's okay. You're okay. Now remember, Samantabhadra uh, in Tibetan Kuntazampo means all good. So the primordially pure mind, uh, your own fundamental basis, the basis of your mind. Uh, we can look at it like a field, a cognizant field, the very basis. Um, it says here, being familiar with this, yogins are fortunate ones who directly perceive the enlightened embodiment of me, Samantabhadra. Their fortune, self-knowing awareness, is equal to mine, and they are free in emptiness. Those with great fortune of being familiar with this attain the enlightened dimension, which does not entail concepts. Appreciating the radiance of my responsiveness, they share equal fortune with me. So this again, when you begin to see your mind, and, and we've been going over Donald Hoffman, how to correlate this with the uh, modern science. But when you think about it in terms of a dream, when you're dreaming, your mind displays a dream based on your cognizance. It, it simultaneously co-emerges a dream. So like that right now, you are creating reality with your mind. And this reality is the radiance of your cognizance. It's going to co-emerge with your cognizance constantly. So you're programming. Uh, some of our programming can be quite troublesome and annoying and harmful. Uh, but just to begin to notice your own programming, your cycles, your habituations, just the noticing alone 
is enough to liberate them and to liberate you from being stuck in a cyclic program. Then you begin to come into spontaneity and openness and revelation and way beyond the scope of your conceptual mind. In fact, all con concepts, all works of science and art and everything will actually begin to um, fall in order to your mind. Instead of them being something out there, they, they're now subservient to your mind. Creativity is subservient to your mind. You're now in the very basis of creativity, whether it's music, mathematics, whatever it may be, love, um, taking a walk. Uh, this whole thing becomes your mind. Every element from earth, water, air, fire, space is all mind. And so that holistic experience entails uh, sort of omniscience. It's got a deep empathy because you're part of it. And through that deep empathy comes a knowingness of all of it. I myself have to admit, I doubted omniscience. It sounds too spectacular for me in my sort of rational, skeptical mind. But then I started to see through empathy and through abiding in the pure presence how omniscience can indeed be possible. So I'm going to continue. Those with great fortune of being familiar with this attain the enlightened dimension, which does not entail concepts. Appreciating the radiance of my responsiveness, they share equal fortune with me. They are my core and my retinue as well. This radiant, precious gem, the supreme secret of the Buddhas, that no one can perceive, this I have revealed. Oh, I'm so happy to see revealed here. You don't actually see that word so often, just like equilibrium. Uh, remember, I always talk about revelation, that wisdom is revealed to you, answers are revealed to you, inventions are revealed to you, life paths, where everything is heading, what's going to happen next. Uh, I wouldn't even talk like this unless I'm myself experiencing this. So uh, I'm really happy the word re revealed is mentioned here. Yeah. Because that's another word that I was using that I haven't seen so much. But that's what I was feeling like it was. So let things be revealed to you. And this goes back to the modern scientific uh, experiment of selective attention that we just watched the other day. Yesterday, I think it was. When we have our attention focused on one thing and we're really fixated on that one thing, well, guess what? What what cannot happen? What can't happen when we're fixated on that one thing? Anybody? Revelation. Isn't it? You agree or no? No, I said you can't see anything else. But also, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you can't see anything else, right? You can't see the gorilla. <laughs> okay. I really want that to be clear for you all because there's stuff in your life right now that you may not be seeing, that you may be missing. All right? The responsiveness of me, Samantha Bhadra, who is without concepts, manifests in ways that are continuous and so the source of hope for ordinary beings is the precious state of unsought rest though it is not the province of ev everyone yogins who have realized this are among those with realization embodiments of victorious ones and that includes all of you without a doubt whether it's this lifetime or next one you are embodiments of victorious ones. Don't ever forget that right here it states that in plain English. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to, to find this in this particular time dimension that we're in. But yogins who have realized this are among those with realization, embodiments of the victorious ones. Okay? 
So hold yourself up to that. Be that. That's what you are. Homage is paid with a devoted mind to these powerful masters. See what I'm saying? That's why we don't disrespect each other. When we talk to each other in here, we treat each other like powerful masters. That's why uh, throughout 10 years, I haven't had a hierarchy in here. And I've always stood right by you all because you all are masters. Powerful masters, indeed. You're alive and it's beautiful. Okay? Whoever is aware of and realizes the mind of me, Samantabhadra, shares a fortune equal to that of a thousand Buddhas. Fortunate spiritual individuals with dynamic aptitude maintain an unwavering state of resting in equal poise. Wow, so here it's not just, oh, you have to be from upper class or oh, you have to be very intelligent. Here I really like this word. It says those individuals with dynamic aptitude. Yeah, those are the ones. They are masters in whom all mandalas converge. Whoever is aware of and understands things in this way encounters the significance of unsought rest. Uh, I just love these texts so much because of their pithiness. <clears throat> 